you and I have something major in common. And we've talked about this when we first met over at the SoFi Stadium for WrestleMania 37. And that is Taylor Swift. We're both these, and it makes me so happy. So I got to ask you, how, how did you become a Taylor Swift fan? So I think initially, it, it, I feel like it was almost a slow burn for me to become a Taylor Swift fan. And I think now, especially the artist that she is now, also kudos to this new album dropping tonight. I oh, can't even believe gosh. that. What was your reaction to that? Um, I just think it's fantastic. I think she is obviously such a hard worker. She's an incredible artist. Um, I love just how much, not, I mean, she's been through hell and back having to deal with a bunch of different career issues and whatnot. But the fact that she is not disheartened by these things and still really wants to tell her stories and be, be a storyteller and write all these beautiful songs and even like re-recording them and then releasing the, the studio sessions on Disney+. Plus. Um, I love that she's just always looking for new ways to, I don't think she's like reinventing herself. I think it's just like the, the layers of the onion continue to unpeel with her. And we, she grew up in front of our eyes and she seems to have kept her shit together while being ridiculed at every single corner, every, every single thing that she's had to come across, she gets ridiculed for. So it's cool to see that she has taken a bit of a step back. She's not in the public eye the way that she used to be. And it seems like she's definitely like stepped away from that a little bit. And it just seems like she's working on just her art form alone. And I love that. I think it's so cool. And then we all just get to reap the benefits of these beautifully crafted songs. It's it's wonderful. And I'm so happy that like people and obviously so many people recognize everything that you just said, where it's like she goes through so much hell and even her fans like being a you know lifelong Taylor Swift fan. Like I have to hear it like left and right. People are like, oh, like, you know, she's a snake. She's this. And I'm like, do you guys even like read? You don't know. You don't know. People, you know, and that's the thing, too. It's like when someone's in the public eye like that and you we only have so much information as well but it's so easy to paint someone especially a woman as being a bitch or too controlling or boy crazy which is like oh my god is there anything worse than trying to label a woman as that because she's dated people that are also celebrities like shut the f up or she Get only writes songs about her exes without an ex she can't write a song so that's what i found really interesting of watching her studio sessions and um uh, on Disney Plus, where she was talking about listening to, God, I think it was Patty Griffin, and how she would weave these stories just about other people. And this was her first time uh, with writing folklore of sort of inventing different characters and giving them storylines and whatnot. So I think there's something really cool about that side of that growth and development of an artist to see finding a new angle to come at, especially when we're all like, sitting in quarantine and maybe for her she's in like a happy nice relationship right now yeah she totally yeah, is that's we're right now, that a heartache that's we know that that's not new information exactly and even like when she uh wrote death by a thousand cuts for the a lover album i everybody was like speculating oh my god did her and joe break up blah right. blah blah she comes out and she's like no i just love writing breakup songs and i wanted to see if i still had it in me and she <laughs> did and she put it out there yeah. and but it's so cool though that like yeah like she brings out you know she she with folklore, she doesn't necessarily she didn't necessarily take stories from like, you know, the tabloids. And obviously they're in there with songs like Mad Woman and My Tears Ricochet. Yeah. So we know that. Uh, but Renee, what is your favorite song off the folklore album? Ooh. Um, I mean, My Tears Ricochet is definitely one that I really like. Um, the one I really like. Um the one is fantastic. The one is really great. Um, hold on, let me pull it, pull it up so I can make sure I don't get like names Go wrong. Go for it. Here. Uno Momento, because I feel like, I mean, as I was watching the, the Disney Plus deal, as it, it's like on here right now. Oh, <laughs> Exile, I love Exile. The guy, the yes. homeboy from Bonnie Bear's voice is so cool. And she wrote that with Joe, right? Yeah, she finally, when she broke, she revealed the news on that Disney Plus session yeah. thing that she yeah. did. And everybody had speculated, but I never thought she would actually confirm it. Yeah, I know. It's really cool. I like that. I like that openness, too. Um, this is me trying. I really like. 
Invisible String I like. I don't love The Last Great American Dynasty. I don't know why. It's just a song I don't love. It's it's different. It's it's different. I think that one, it's like either a hit or miss for some people. It's like a story. And that's that's the whole point. It's like a story about somebody else and the storytelling in it's great. But uh, yeah, it's, it's not my favorite of them, but the other ones I love. So obviously we're, you know, we just had Folklore. We're getting Evermore. There's so many other albums out there. Lover, Reputation, 1989, Fearless, Red, Debut, so many. Which album do you think is your favorite or that you just like love? And then also like your favorite song, even if it's like not on Folklore. So I actually really love the Lover album. Yes. Yeah, it's a nice Lover album. album really great. Um, there's, there's just so many songs on there that, I love like Afterglow, False God. Um, it's nice to have a friend. There's these songs I just think are so sweet and cool. Um, 1989, I really love as well. I mean, it's just crazy looking at her discography about how many hits she has. Like she is such a bona fide star. It's so undeniable that she has just so much crazy talent. Yeah, it's yeah. hard to look at this and like really decide. I mean, she has, Speak Now's got some bangers on it. I don't know. Oh. God, speak now that was my favorite album all the yeah. way up until she came out with reputation unfortunately i had to replace speak now renee i do want to ask you though if you have any other pop girls that you're a fan of like i don't know miley camila demi billy like there's so many lana lord yeah i mean there's there is a ton i mean people that i'm really into and have been into for a couple of years um i love Marin morris i know she Falls into the pop category, more like the countryside, but still very poppy. Um, I love Casey Musgraves a lot, too. I think Billie Eilish is amazing. Um, I love Haley Williams, too. If she falls in that pop category, I think she kind of does. Um, her album is one that I listened to a lot when it dropped. Um, and, and even the way she released her album, too, and, like, the different parts and different chunks and whatnot, I think she's such an amazing talent. Um gosh who else i'm a huge lady gaga fan i love lady gaga yeah i think she's fantastic she's somebody who um that makes up a, a majority of my workout playlist is some lady gaga her whole album her whole album the fame is my life like that's one of my top 10 favorite albums that yeah. album. she's incredible she's so good she's i mean yeah she's she's also just one of those like undeniable talents she changes she grows she's evolves um, I, yeah, I, I'm just such a huge fan of her work too. She's somebody when she was doing a residency in Las Vegas, I'm devastated I didn't get to go.